Today, our lesson is on St. Luke, the Evangelist. The early church fathers ascribed to St. Luke, the Evangelist, authorship of both the Gospel of Luke and the full book of the Acts of the Apostles, which would mean that Luke contributed over a quarter of the text of the New Testament, 27.3% to be exact, more than any other author, including that of St. Paul. Luke was a Greek physician who lived in the Greek city of Antioch, Turkey, in ancient Syria. See how much those borders have changed over the centuries? The Acts of the Apostles points to a Gentile Christian writing for a Gentile audience, although writers conclude that it is more plausible that Luke and Acts is directed to a community made up of both Jewish and Gentile Christians because there is a stress on the scriptural roots of the Gentile mission. While he does exclude himself from those who were witnesses, eyewitnesses to Jesus' ministry, Luke repeatedly uses the word we, the plural pronoun individual, in describing the Pauline mis missions in X of the apostles, indicating that he was personally there at those times. There is similar evidence that Luke resided in Troas, the province which included the ruins of ancient Troy, when he writes in Acts in the third person voice about Paul and his travels until they get to Troas, where his switches to the voice of a single person, first person plural. The we section of Acts continues until the group leaves Philippi when he returns to the previous voice of the third person. This change happens again when the group returns to Philippi. There are three we sections in Acts, all following this same rule. Luke never stated, however, that he lived in Troas, and this is the only evidence that he did. Luke's presence in Rome with the Apostle St. Paul near the end of Paul's life, was attested to in the writings found within the Pauline writings of Paul's second letter to Timothy, which we just heard, 2 Timothy 4.11, where he relates to his disciple, Only Luke is with me. In the last chapter of the book of Acts, widely attributed to Luke, there are several accounts made in the first-person voice that also affirm Luke's presence in Rome, including Acts 28.16. And when we came to Rome. St. Luke the Evangelist died at the age of 84. That's a very old, old man of those years. In Boeotia. And his tomb was located in Thebes until his relics were transferred to Constantinople in the year 357. Most scholars understand St. Luke's words in Luke and in Acts in the tradition of Greek historiography. That is writing in according to the historical form, using both, both words and pictures. The preface of the Gospel of Luke identified the work to the readers as belonging to the genre of history, having been written by a witness to the true historical events in places just as he described them, accurately within his writings. All were based on an accurate description of the towns, cities and islands, as well as correctly naming various official titles. The archaeologist Sir William Ramsay wrote that Luke is a historian of the first rank. Not merely are his statements of fact trustworthy, but he should be placed among the very greatest of historians. But Luke wasn't writing a historical treatise, but a theological document of the spiritual events of which he was witness. Thus, you have angels and demons that would not be allowed in a historical document, but they are allowed in a spiritual witness presentation. St. Luke the Evangelist is a patron saint of artists, physicians, 
for he was one. Bachelors. Surgeons. Once again, he was one. Students and butchers. And his feast day, as we now know, takes place in the East and the West on October 18. Pray to the great intercessor of St. Luke the Evangelist. If you ever need assistance, on or near 18 October. <laughs>